Who's ready for some more football? We got best bets for NFL week two. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back in to another episode for Just a Bet Outside. I'm your host, Steven, and we're here to talk week two of the NFL. I cannot wait for some more football. Uh, we're going to recap Thursday Night Football and that horrendous game between the Bills and the Dolphins in just a little bit. Um, and as you know, we give trends out in this video every single week. The trends went six and seven last week, so uh, it was kind of a ho-hum weekend for those. But uh, we'll give you more of those. Two quick reminders before we get into it, though. Our NFL player props, that video is out late Friday night, so that will not be in this video like last week. And there will be no MLB video for Friday, but I will still give out best bets. It'll be on the community tab on X and on Discord, which is free. Click that link below to join. Uh, just had no time to do both of these videos. Wanted to make sure we really focused on NFL tonight. So now we have one free month of Outlier to give away to two people like we talked about in yesterday's video. So here they are. Congrats to at SharpSniper10 and at Ben Ruhala7042. Reach out to me, uh, private message me on Twitter, X, or Discord, or here on YouTube, and we can try to um, get you the uh, info that you need for that one free month. So congrats. I appreciate everyone uh, for all the nice comments and everything like that, but uh, we'll hopefully have a giveaway again very shortly. But anyways, Outlier, if you don't know, it's been a huge help. In baseball, we're up almost 20 units in the second half of the season. That's when I started using Outlier. It is a one-stop shop for all your betting research help. You have NFL, NBA, MLB, and WNBA. Um, I believe all sports bettors need the tools to become a successful sports better long-term, and Outlier is that one. So go click that link below and at least go give it a try. So now let's get into the slate in week two. And of course, that means NFL fun fact time. I got two quick ones, and this one, first one is not even really football related at all. It's just a weird fun fact. Uh, first one, Julian Edelman, the receiver for the Patriots, went to prom with Jerry Rice's daughter. You can't make that up. Second one, the Patriots' margin of victory for their six rings with Tom Brady was only plus 4.83 points. That's right. They uh, they won some close ones. Let's just say that. So, anyways, in this video, we're going to recap Thursday Night Football, even though I don't want to. And then we're going to go over the Week 2 trends. And then, of course, we'll give you our four best bets for NFL Week 2 and wrap it all up with the recap. So, hit that like button if you haven't already. Leave a comment below. really helps this channel grow. And we, by the way, we hit 28,000 subscribers. So if you're new to the channel, hit that subscri subscribe button as we're now on our way to 29,000 subscribers. You guys are awesome. The Jabbo community freaking rocks. So we appreciate it. But let's get into it. And it starts with the recap. All right. Unlike last Thursday when we got a winner, today we did not. Um, I don't know what to tell you guys. James Cook, first drive, 17-yard touchdown. And I mean receiving touchdown. He had 17 yards five minutes into the game. Guess what he ends with? 17. The game becomes an absolute blowout because the Dolphins still suck against good teams and against the Buffalo Bills. And uh, he just never had another one. Just one catch for 17 yards, and we end it with that. Um, and so that was a tough loss to take, to be honest with you. I thought it was going to be an easy cash after that one. But Josh Allen, anytime touchdown, I mean, there was only one chance where they were really even by the goal line. They just had one play handed off to James Cook for the rushing touchdown, and he didn't get touched. Other than that, there's a lot of long touchdowns, defensive pick six touchdowns, just not a lot of opportunities for Josh Allen there. So obviously with touchdown bets, you got to get a little lucky as well. But uh, that takes us out of our plus .03 units from week one. And now we're down point one point six five. but that's easy to get back. We'll uh, hopefully have a good week two and get all that back plus a lot more. So that's a Thursday night football recap. And now let's talk the week two trends. All right, buckle up. We got a lot of trends and info to go over. These are the week two trends. Like I said, they went six and seven in week one, uh, 115 and 81 last year. But in 2023, Baltimore 4 0 straight up and against the spread after loss, winning by almost 18 points. I mean, they know how to come back after a loss. If you like that, you take Baltimore minus eight. Commanders have allowed a 20, at least 27 points in nine straight games. Their defense is so awful. If you like that, though, you have to take the Giants team total over 20 and a half. Disgusting. Saints, 4-10-1 against the spread after a win under head coach Dennis Allen. That's because Dennis Allen is not a good coach. If you like that, you take the Dallas minus 6. And then Panthers went under their team total in 7 of 8 home games last year. Their team total 16.5. Again, yuck. Packers, 14-3 against the spread as an underdog of 3 or more under Matt LaFleur. If you like that, they are underdogs at home this week uh, against the Colts at plus 3. Browns, over in 10 straight road games. The total of that game is 41.5. 
but that means you have to back Deshaun Watson. Uh, Vikings are two and eight against the spread in their last 10 home games. If you like that, uh, if you fade that, then you take San Fran minus five Patriots under their team total on 13 of the last 18 games. Team total is set at 16 and a half against the Seahawks. Uh, Jets three and 16 against the spread last 19 September games. If you are, are into that, if you go with that Tennessee plus four, again, Jets have had some terrible quarterback play though. Bucks. 7-2 and two against the spread as a road underdog since the start of last year. If you like that, then you take Tampa Bay plus 7.5 at Detroit. Rams, 9-0 against the spread in their last nine games in Arizona. That's right. I said that. 9-0 ATS the last nine games, not just versus Arizona, in Arizona. Rams are an underdog at plus 1.5. Broncos, 14-4 against the spread in the first quarter of the last 18 games. We had this last week, and they cashed. And let's see if they do it again. They are plus a half on the first quarter line. Since 2020, Bengals 1-8 and eight straight up and 2-7 and seven against the spread in weeks 1 and 2. We know the Bengals get off to slow starts. Those are the numbers to back it up. Um, so if you like it, then if you like to fade that, then you go KC minus 5.5. Bears under an 8 of the last 11 games. That total in that game against the Texans on Sunday Night Football is 45.5. So that's what we got for page 1. Now let's check out page 2. All right, this page two is honestly just more info. We're not counting this towards a trends record or anything. It's just things I found from week one and, and stuff like that. And I'm just a nerd with all this. So if you hate this stuff, obviously you can fast forward. But this is pretty useful information in my opinion. So favorites uh, that went favorites in week one went 13-3 and three straight up, 9-7 and seven ATS. That is the best straight up record for week one since 2002. That's right. So if you thought all dogs were going to win, um, you struggled. Teams to blow a 10 plus point lead in week one are 29 and 17 straight up, 28, 17, and 1 ATS in week two since 1990. How about that stat? In the first four weeks, though, those teams are 80, 56, and 3 to the over. These teams that we're talking about that blew 10 plus point leads in week one are Arizona, Jacksonville, and the freaking Titans. I'm still mad about Levis. Um, and then only eight of 24 QBs went over one and a half passing touchdowns in week one. That's kind of crazy. Uh, that only eight of 24. Only two teams even threw for over 300 yards in week one, Miami and the Rams, and both of those lost against the spread. Uh, only 11 QBs have had 25 or more pass attempts and fewer than 100 passing yards in their first start. Caleb Williams is now on that list because he was horrendous. Now, in the last one, in the last decade, teams to hold have 25 minutes of possession or less in week one. This is wild. 8 and 23 straight up, 6 and 25 against the spread, guys. That is a 19% rate in week two. So, the four teams that got held to 25 minutes or less of uh, possession time the Jets, Colts, Panthers, and Falcons. That would mean you fade all of them if you actually just uh, bet on that trend. So, I thought those are just some interesting stats. Hopefully, you guys like it too, um, along with the page one of those trends. So, as you can see right there, trends record, we try to keep track of it. Again, this is not me saying go bet this. This is just trends I find and I want to give to you that I think are valuable. I don't like to give you trends that hit like 52% of the time or anything. I uh, just wanted to go a little bit more. But this season, six and seven. Last year, 115 and 81. All right, enough of the numbers. It is now time for the best bets. All right, this first game takes us out to the desert where the Cardinals are hosting the LA Rams. Cardinals minus one and a half total in this game is 48 points. Um, just some notes and trends. You guys already saw the trends. The Rams have now won nine straight games in Arizona. Five of the last seven have been by double digits. The Rams under Sean McVay versus Arizona overall. How about 12 and two straight up, 11, two and one against the spread. They have scored 28.6 points per game uh, versus to Arizona's 15.2 points per game. They are the Cardinals' daddy. They absolutely own them. Rams coming in off an overtime loss in Detroit when they actually played pretty well. Cardinals gave up 34 to Buffalo after a strong start in that game. Uh, if you watch Marvin Harrison play, kind of looked lost. Uh, he, I don't know. I saw some highlights of him. He looked lost on some routes. Kyler missed him on a couple. Just was not a good rookie performance. So we'll see how he comes out in game two. But now, my best bet, I'm going to tell you on the side, I do like the Rams. I don't understand why they're underdogs at all. They are the better team. I know there's injuries and all that. But I like this one a bit more. Give me the Rams team total over 23 and a half points at minus 112 on DraftKings. This is a one unit play for me. Let's get the injuries out of the way. I know Puka Nakua will not be playing. If I didn't know that, I, I'm really bad at my job. Um, but they have all week to prepare for that now. He wasn't. He was lost in the middle of last game, which is tough. They also have two offensive linemen that went to the IR. That is absolutely not um, ideal. But they should get Havenstein back, or Havenstein, however you pronounce it. He was one of their best offensive linemen. He wasn't there for week one. So that does help. And here's what else helps. 
Cardinals have practically zero pass rush. I mean, I think this defense is a bottom three, bottom five defense over the course of the season. They're just absolutely terrible. Uh, they have no playmakers pretty much whatsoever. They gave up 352 total yards, 130 on the ground last week to the Buffalo Bills. And even with a banged up O-line, I think Kyron Williams has a big game on the ground here. Um, and then, of course, you still got Cooper Cup, who, by the way, had 21 targets last week with 14 receptions. That's just insane. Um, cards have no one who can slow them down. Not many people do. But Rams, um, you know, they may have some issues with this current state if they play teams that get a lot of pressure on quarterbacks. But like I said, the Cardinals are not that team at all. Um, the Cardinals' third lowest pressure rate in the NFL last week at only 13.8%. I expect more of the same. This team is not loaded with pass rushers or anything. You give me Stafford, Cooper Cup, a good running game versus a uh, little pressure. And by the way, Stafford obviously is a statue back there. So that's the kind of matchup you want for him. Um, it's, the Lions didn't get as much pressure as I thought they would, but uh, they do get more pressure than the Cardinals, that's for sure. So um, I also, what you kind of look at, and I do this for every sport, it kind of helps when you have a running mate. So if the Cardinals can score a little bit, they keep the game going, keep it a shootout, keep the other, keep the Rams uh, throwing the ball a lot and all that kind of stuff. I think the Cardinals can score decently in this game. Rams defense looked okay, but they're young defense. Arizona's back at home here. So I think they can score some points. I, I do like the over in this game, um, which I think will keep the Rams um, playing. And um, again, I think Kyron Williams has a big game as well. So in my first best bet for one unit, give me the Rams team total over 23 and a half points as my first best bet. All right, bet number two, it's our first teaser of the year, baby. What doesn't get you more excited than that? That's right. So if you don't know what a six-point teaser is, you are taking two lines and moving it six points in your favor, and you team it together, you get minus 120 on DraftKings. My six-point teaser is the Lions minus one and a half and the Ravens minus two. So this first one, Lions are minus seven and a half point favorites. I'm taking all the way down to one and a half. If you've never bet a teaser before, some tips and helpful advice. You want to go through key numbers. Uh, you don't want to take a teaser of a, a team minus three and take them to plus three or anything like that. You want to go through the three, the four, the six, the seven, things like that. So whenever you have an eight-point spread, a seven and a half, taking them down to win to less by less than a field goal is kind of a key factor. Um, or you can take a team maybe that you'd like to win a game. Maybe they're plus two and a half, plus one and a half. Take them up six points, and now you get over the touchdown. So those are kind of some of the keys. I do like the Rams, by the way, in the last game as part of a teaser if you want that too. But... My six-point teaser. Let's talk about this first leg. Lions minus one and a half. I just need the two-point win. That's all I need. It's a rematch of their playoff win against the Buccaneers last season. Lions didn't play their best game and still won last week. The crazy part is I was telling someone in Discord, when I was watching that game, I still expected the Lions to win. I have never felt like that in my whole life, where I watch a Lions game and I'll be like, oh, they'll figure it out. They'll win. It was always the opposite. This is a different Lions team. They showed what they are capable of in overtime, which is absolutely bullying the other team and running down their throats and that's what they did to score the game-winning touchdown. So um, to go with the great run game that they have with Montgomery and Gibbs and Amon Rao St. Brown, they now have another elite wide receiver. I was waiting to break out this year. That's why I have him in all my fantasy teams, Mr. Jameis. Jameson Williams, you know who he is. First-round pick out of Alabama. Had some injuries and some sports gambling issues that kept him suspended. Um, but uh, he was an absolute stud. And honestly, I think he could have had an even bigger game. Um, but he, he was awesome. So they have so many weapons everywhere. But this game's at home. And oh, by the way, Jared Goff is 26 and nine against the spread the last three years at home. Dan Campbell has been the most profitable head coach since he joined as the head coach of the Lions. Beating them in Detroit is going to be a very difficult thing for visiting teams. Um, again, and that's against the spread. That's seven and a half. I only need a two point win here. So facing a Bucks defense, they're going to be struggling this one. They're going to be missing their number one DB and Antoine Winfield and other guys are questionable in this secondary. That is going to be a big problem versus a Monroe, St. Brown, and Jameson Williams. Bucks usually pretty good against the run. You know, I expect them to be decent this year as well. Not a lead or anything, but the the Lions did run for over 100 yards against them in the playoffs. It doesn't matter as much to me. I mean, it will help, but when you have this kind of O-line that can just push anybody, the Lions are going to have a good running game pretty much every game, in my opinion. They're just a different animal. So um, they're, they're a lion. <laughs> okay, anyways, um, last week, they did face a rookie quarterback and a weak offense in the commander. So, I mean, to really judge on how good the Bucks defense was, it's going to be hard because this is a humongous step up in competition, obviously. Um, Bucks offensively, also hard to know what they are because they just played the worst NFL defense since the beginning of last year. The Washington commanders are so horrendous. I mean, they're going to be historically bad on defense. Um, and you saw it. Baker Mayfield had four passing touchdowns. Mike Evans dominated. Um, he's a stud, though, but... Um, he didn't get pressured much. He's going to get pressured more by this Lions team. That is a fact. In Detroit, 
is a whole different ball game compared to playing the Washington Commanders and the rookie quarterback Jaden Daniels. But um, if, in my opinion, this year, if you want to go into Detroit and win where they just dominate, you have to play flawless football. You have to have a lot of talent and just not make any mistakes. I don't see that happening here for them, to be honest with you. Their secondary is beat up, and that's not what you want to see because if they are able to run the ball like they always do and then also set up the play-action pass and just have Jameson Williams, Amon Ross, St. Brown, uh, Sam Laporta, all these guys finding just zone or uh, different areas, it's going to be ugly. I think the Lions are going to put up quite a few points here. Um, and again, I just need the Lions to win by two points. So that's the first leg. Second leg, Ra Ravens minus two at home against the Raiders. Yes, I have two home teams, which I also love in a teaser as well. Um, but I am taking this line down from minus eight. As you guys know, I'm not a huge Ravens believer this year. You guys have heard it already. They struggle on the offensive line. I think they are taking a step back, but they are still a good team and the far better team and also dominant at home. Ravens, even though I don't think they played that great, they were a toe away from possibly winning in Kansas City in week one. Um, and you know what? They did that pretty much without Mark Andrews because Kansas City knows how to shut out Mark Andrews. They've done it now two games in a row. Um, that's why Isaiah Likely went absolutely crazy. But this Ravens offense, Isaiah Likely is obviously a weapon. He's a stud. Mark Andrews will play well. Um, and then they got Zay Flowers. Their O-line is a worry. But uh, here's where I think they're going to dominate this game. It's going to be Derrick Henry in the ground game. And I'm not a big Derrick Henry guy. He's 30 years old. He's he's lost a step, obviously. J.K. Dobbins against this Raiders team just ran for 135 yards on 10 carries. That is absolutely insane. Um, I expect Derrick Henry and Lamar to gash them on the ground. That's where they're going to just take care of the clock and control this game. Now, the Raiders on offense, they moved the ball decently well. Gardner Minshew wasn't terrible, but they could not finish drives. And my goodness, do they play conservative. Here's a crazy stat for you. The Raiders, last game, last week, they were down in the fourth quarter, fourth and one trailing in the opponent territory, in, in L.A. Charger territory, and they punted. That is the first time a team has punted on fourth and one in opponent's territory trailing in the fourth quarter in like, what was it, 10 years, eight years, something. It's just one of those things that was just absolutely crazy. They were down 16 to 10 at that time. Um, I thought I had the exact years here, but I didn't. But it's been a very long time, and that was just a crazy decision. He's getting a lot of flack for it. But uh, anyways, that was just a fun fact there. O-line did not open up many holes for Zamir White. If you watch the game, it was ugly. 13 carries for 44 yards, and they just lack playmakers. We know that. Um, Devontae Adams is their playmaker. Other than that, they do not have much there. Um, and the Raiders' second best offense on, or weapon on offense, rookie tight end Brock Bowers. I think he's a very good player, but I'm leaning his under player props right now because this is a very tough matchup for tight ends going up against these elite linebackers and safeties of the Baltimore Ravens. They know how to figure that out. Um, so the only worry I have really in this game is the pass rush of the Raiders is pretty decent against this weaker O-line of the Ravens. Uh, when it comes to pass protection. But again, I think their run game is going to make up for it. Lamar's legs help that helps that out as well. So that's what I like. Those are my two legs. Give me the Lions minus one and a half. The Ravens minus two as my six point teaser and second best bet. All right, before we get into our final two bets and the trends parlay, we got to tell you about this great promotion with Bet365, guys. I got to tell you as many times as I can because this promotion will not last long. If you are in a legal state with Bet365, now is the chance. I always recommend people get as many sports books as you can so you have all the different odds and get the best value on your bets. This promotion, click the link below to sign up and you get Bet $5, get $200 in bonus bets. It doesn't matter what happens with that $5 bet. Win, lose, you are still getting $200 in bonus bets. So take advantage of that deal right now with Bet365. Of course, you must be 21 years or older to gamble. If you have a gambling problem, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, back to the bets. All right, this third one takes us out to New England where the Patriots host my Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks minus 3.5 total in this game, 38.5. I'm not going to give you a lot of notes and trends because this is an ugly one. Uh, but I will say Kenneth Walker is very questionable with an oblique injury, has not practiced yet. So my best bet, it's ugly. Plug your nose. I apologize. Give me the under 38 and a half at minus 110 on DraftKings for a half unit. Um, I just expect this to be a slug it out, ugly game. Seahawks offense versus Patriots defense. Again, if there's no Kenneth Walker and we rely on Charbonnet, it's going to be a big difference. Kenneth Walker is one of our best weapons you saw in week one. The Seahawks offensive line is a bottom five offense, offensive line. It's just the first half performance they put on was just atrocious. I have never seen anything like it. Um, and now they're going to be against this Patriots defense. Um, you know, I'm, I'm decent on their defensive line, um, but the Seahawks rely on either Kenneth Walker or great receivers that they have, which they kind of had a, a not a great game in week one, honestly, um, because it's hard to when you have a battle line. But 
I think this Patriots secondary is pretty good. Christian Gonzalez, if you don't know, was a rookie last year. Before he got hurt, he was a stud, and he still is a stud. He's going to be able to slow someone down. Jonathan, Marcus Jones, they have a pretty good secondary on this team, and that's the one thing that I think the Patriots will be good at this year is their defense. Um, they didn't put a ton of pressure on Burrow last last week, but I think they're going to have a much easier time here versus the Seahawks O-line, and it's going to be in New England now. Seahawks won't have the luxury of playing in Seattle. So if the Seahawks cannot get the run game going, they are going to massively struggle to score in this game, in my opinion. So uh, Patriots offense now, one of the worst units in all of football. Now, I'll just say that. They created, they're probably not as bad as the commander's defense and maybe Cardinals defense, but I will say they are right there. They created two turnovers last week and still managed to score 16 points. The Pats wide receivers are maybe the worst position group in the entire NFL. I mean, it is terrible. Hawks and Devon Witherspoon and all those boys, I don't think they're going to have an issue shutting them down. In fact, it's almost like an off week for any team facing or any secondary facing the Patriots uh, wide receivers. But from Andre Stevenson, I think he's a pretty good running back. He he's actually was a lone bright spot for them. Um, he got hit a lot in that game, if you saw, but he broke a lot of tackles and he ended up with tw 120 yards on 25 carries. That 25 carries number means they are focused and um, relying on running the ball. And you know what? I think the Hawks are going to be the same way with or without Kenneth Walker. And if they do that, that means we're going to have that clock run down and down and down. It's going to go quick, which will help this under as well. So it's going to come down to the running game. If the Hawks can slow down Ramondre Stevenson, then I think the Patriots are going to have a very, very difficult time to score as well. It's going to be a rock fight. So um, overall, it's going to, I think both teams can slow down the run game and the, and the pass game. And I think there's going to be a lot of field position playing more safe, conservative type of type of football. Both lot O lines are absolute hot garbage. Um, I like them to struggle in like a 17-14 type game. So give me the under of 38 and a half points as my third best bet. All right, this fourth and final bet before we get to the trends parlay that we do every week takes us out to Dallas, Texas, where the Cowboys host the New Orleans Saints. Cowboys minus six, total in this game, 47 points. Again, I'm skipping the notes and the trends. I'm just going to get right into this. This is a half unit play. Give me the boys minus six. I know I don't want, I'm not really happy about it. I'm not a cowboy guy, um, but let's just talk about this for a second. They were undefeated at home last season. Um, in fact, last seven games is a five point favorite or more. They have dominated winning by 23 or more points in six of the last seven. The only one they didn't, they won by six points. They have taken care of business as a big favorite lately, especially at home. Um, I like the minus six here. Obviously, if you get into six and a half, seven, that is a big difference in football, just so you guys know. So I love getting the six here. So if they do win by that key number of six, at least you get that push as well. But Saints looked like a very good team in week one and a team that we all thought uh, that might be better than we all thought. Well, guess what? I'm not buying it one freaking bit. I'm just not. If they prove me wrong, hats off to them. We'll take the loss and move on. But the, Pat the Panthers, the team they played, <laughs> they are so bad. Um, I'm talking about some bad teams right now. But uh, Panthers had only one pressure in the first half. I'm going to say that again. Not one sack, one pressure in the first half. They had the lowest quarterback pressure in the entire NFL in week one at 7.7%. That is absolutely horrific. Uh, they get rid of Brian Burns. They don't have much else. That's just what happens. So um, I don't credit that to the Saints having a good offensive line because I think they're going to be garbage this year, to be honest with you. Um, I've thought it all offseason, and just because they played this terrible Panthers defense, I'm not going to change my opinion yet. Maybe they do change my mind later. Um, but right now, I don't think they have a good O-line, and that's going to be a problem because they are now going to face, instead of the worst pressure team, one of the better rush teams, um, pressure teams in the NFL because guess who led the league in sacks last weekend? The Dallas Cowboys. Six sacks on Deshaun Watson. Um, I'm not even going to talk about Deshaun, but life is falling apart for that guy. That's for sure. But anyways, the one big strength of their defense is that pass rush. And I think they're going to make life a living hell for Derek Carr in the Saints offense. Derek Carr is not that good. We know who he is. Um, he is who we thought he is or something like that. But anyways, um, I think the Cowboys have a really good shot at getting a defensive touchdown, honestly, and uh, getting a couple turnovers, which is going to set up nicely um, for possibly a blowout here, which would be really nice. But let's talk Cowboys offense now. I'm not in love with this run game. I mean, who would be? It's a 40-year-old Zeke. Um, it's not 40, but Enrico Dowdle. Nothing special, but they're facing a bad Saints D-line. I don't think they're as good as they used to be. Cameron Jordan was a stud. And he's been a stud for a long time. He's a shell of himself. Brian Brees, who they have, the youngster, hasn't lived up to expectations at all. They just don't uh, bring much to the table, in my opinion. On top of that, Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew, and their top corner, Marshawn Lattimore, are both hurt and questionable to even play. That is going to be a problem against C.D. Lamb and these boys. Um, I expect Dak to have plenty of time to find his receivers, even though I'm not a... I think the Cowboys O-line 
maybe took a step back, but we'll see. Maybe maybe they are still decent, but either way, they just have to be average because they're not going to face a lot of pass rush in this one. Um, and I just think the Cowboys have an advantage in both sides of the trenches. I think they can win this game pretty easily. It's also another good teaser option because if you take it down six points, you just need the Cowboys to win. But it's their home opener. They are motivated. I think they come out and uh, take care of business here. So give me the Cowboys minus six as my fourth and final best bet for a half unit. And now let's check out the trends parlay. All right, we do this every single week. We pick our three favorite trends and put it in a parlay, not towards the official record, but let's try to win some money. The trends parlay this weekend, three-legger plus 472. I'm going to sprinkle a half unit on it. The over 41 and a half Browns and Jaguars, Broncos plus a half in the first quarter, and the Rams plus one and a half. So let's just talk about each one briefly. The trend that we're following on this first leg, the Browns have gone over in 10 straight road games. Now, the analysis part of it. Browns defense last season, as you know, it was bizarre. They gave up over 30 points per game on the road and less than 14 points per game at home. It was just insane. Didn't make sense. Um, I think the Jags can have some success here if they open up the playbook a little bit. Um, but it's going to come down to Deshaun Watson. Can he block out all the noise that he himself created and play like an actual NFL quarterback quarterback again? Um, I'm sorry, but Deshaun just seems like a bad human being. And, uh, I don't think he's going to be a quarterback very long in this league, to be honest with you. Um, it's a low total because of Deshaun and this Browns defense, but if they can somehow manage to score some points, 41 and a half is pretty low for these teams. So let's take a shot on the over 41 and a half. Second leg Broncos, a half of a uh, plus a half in the first quarter. I don't usually bet first quarter bets, as you can tell by me trying to say it. Broncos 14 and four against the spread in the first quarter, last 18. That is the trend we are following. Analysis well, it's the Denver's home opener, so you expect them to come out strong because they have come out ready to play, obviously, lately or in the last 18 games. But Justin Fields is a quarterback on the other side for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's not good. He just he can't make it past his first read. So you kind of think, well, they'll probably start out slow too. They did not play well offensively last week, even though they won. Um, this bet cashes at 0-0 or 3-3 tie after the first quarter. Any sort of tie is a cash. So let's just give it a shot. Broncos plus a half in the first quarter. And the third leg, we talked about it already. Rams plus one and a half. We're kind of double dipping here, but the trend we're following on this one. Rams 9-0 against the spread last nine games in Arizona. Um, I'll talk a little analysis, but we just talked about it in one of our best bets. Even with Nakua out, I still think they are the better team. They're hungry. They do not want to start out 0-2. The Cardinals defense is absolutely horrendous. And we saw what happens when divisional matchups are owned by one team. The Bills have dominated the Dolphins, but a lot of people thought the Dolphins would win today. And they got crushed yet again because the Bills absolutely own them and just match up well with them. I think that's the same case with the Rams. So give me the Rams plus one and a half as the third leg. And those are my three legs of the trends parlay. Again, each one is just following one of the trends we gave out earlier. And let's see if we can get a winner. So that's what I got for the show. But before we wrap it up, let's check out the recap. All right, here's the week two best bets. Again, the player props will be out on Friday night in their own video. But we got two one-unit plays to start out. Rams team total over 23.5 points. And then a six-point teaser. Lions minus 1.5. Ravens minus 2. Minus 120 on DraftKings. And then under 38 and a half Seahawks Patriots in an ugly bet, minus 110 for a half unit. Cowboys minus six in their home opener against the Saints for a half unit. And then the trends parlay, I'm going to sprinkle a half unit on it. Let's just take a chance. Over 41 and a half Cleveland Jacksonville. Broncos plus a half in the first quarter. And the Rams plus one and a half in Arizona. So that's what we got for the NFL week two video. I am ready to roll. And now it's going to be time for the player props tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Again, just a quick reminder, no MLB video for today, but I will still be dropping my best bet. So thanks again for listening and all the support. We really appreciate it. And we'll talk to you soon.